<laughs> okay, uh, I will now open just uh, sorry, uh, a new document. <laughs> I will use that only top view on this side and grasshopper is here. Uh, here in the math, probably you will have a C sharp. I will bring it. Uh, but before I will start to play, I will just create a population of points. So I will create a series. Then I will create point um, or construct point or XYZ. I think it's the shortcut to construct point. If you type. So I connect this series to X, and then if I will graph here, I will have a population of points. Series. Series. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Because I want to okay. operate on. Uh, no. Uh, why did it create the population of points in the graph? Uh, because uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> why did it make a population of uh, points? Huh. Um, it's a little bit similar to Dynamo with uh, using different levels, but uh, anytime. Uh, Okay, let's explain why it did uh, uh, why it didn't uh, show the whole thing. I will just create the first panel, and also I will control C, control V this one. And generally, it's the same, but I want to uh, explain you something. Like now. Uh, if I am looking on this, how it's constructing a point, he's taking the zero element x position and the zero element here to the y position of constructing point. And then he's taking the first or the second element in the list and connecting it with the second element here with the list. But when I am grafting it, I will use the graft here. He is putting all of these numbers in different branch. So now he's taking this uh, element in this branch and connects with this one. And also he's not stopping and moving later because it's a different branch. So he's connecting this element with all of the elements in this uh, list. Uh, so uh, this is how, how uh, it works here. Um, Do you make a matrix instead of just... Yeah, uh, it's... I would have zero one two list and zero one two. Then, if I am not using uh, graphing, this one, uh, this zero is connecting to this zero because the, uh, this one is connecting to this one, and this two is connecting with this two. But if I will graph it. And I will connect it with this list. It will take this zero, and it will take this zero, and he will see that he is the one in the list. So, so uh, he will also try to combine with another element in this list. Uh, so he will put this zero, this one, this zero, this two, and he will do the same for the other elements. Uh, it's, it's, the way how it is. The, the, the other thing is that why he did, uh, if I will put a single number like zero, and why he did 10 elements? Because he has got a, one element here and 10 elements here. And exactly the same he is using with if, uh, if it's coming in the branch, he tricks this zero as exactly this uh, zero. So uh, he's combining this zero with all elements in the list. Because you could also think why he's doing it. He should just take this zero, since this is the one element, and connect with one element from this list. But he's generally combining with, with all elements in the list. 
so the other solution for it is if it's in the branch, he tricks it uh, like he's restarting the whole construct point uh, algorithm again. Uh, so he's 10 times doing um, uh, this thing. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of points and uh, I will flatten it at the end. So I have a flattened um, list of 100 points. <coughs> and then uh, I will leave it for a second, just to focus on the C-sharp uh, script. First of all, on the right, uh, here we have inputs on the left side, outputs on the right side. C sharp script, uh, script, if we double click, uh, we should open the debugger and you already see the, some, the same things which were in the Visual Studio. We have a public class, then we have a private void run script. We were using the main here, but it was void uh, in the C sharp. And then he has some kind of the inputs and reference object, which is an output. Also, we have a using, and this you can already be familiar with, using system and using uh, collections and using collection generic. This is something which we already used. Uh, used. Um, you, you cannot add here anything. Uh, if, if you see that it's all uh, gray, then you cannot uh, change it. This is why it's a little bit easier to operate in the Visual Studio because you can add libraries. But there is a, another way to add libraries and I will show you it uh, later. But uh, right now, let's just focus what we have here. We have some object X and object Y and then referencing object A. Let's try to say that A is equal to X plus Y and semicolon. I will try to zoom it. Oh my gosh, it's so... Okay, we will not do anything with this. Uh, Stainer, how did you manage to? Okay. Uh, yeah, but that's why I'm, uh, I was thinking of. Okay, I will just type here a equal to x plus y. You type, of course, in your uh, grasshopper thing. Uh, we will not belong inside the grasshopper. So a equal to y. Yeah. I have to reinstall it. Windows. Windows doing work color. Not here. I didn't work in the color. So the object is uh, point. So. Yeah. Uh, Okay, but now it's a little bit, yeah, now at least it's possible to. Um, so we have A equal to X plus Y. If I will go out, um, 
generally is expecting some numbers. I will put just slider one and copy it and just put it to the X and Y. And he generally don't know what to do with it. Uh, he couldn't uh, read what is the object bearer definition. So we have to get him, or we have to declare for him what is the type of the um, input. Right click on the X and then there is a type hint. And I will go for integer for X and Y. Type hint. Yeah, show me what's the error. Did you change type hint? So right. No, I didn't, but I lost uh, the code. So when I close this, did it just delete? The other yeah, one? but sometimes uh, be aware of that if you are opening uh, and you just uh, move it somewhere and you reopen, this will uh, sometimes be can be problematic because then you're writing into. Uh, yeah, I think I'm doing that. Now. Okay. So so just uh, okay. Double click on it and just put a, a keyword. You have to double click on the C sharp, not in the A. And then a, a big A equal to X plus Y. Mm -hmm. That's good. Click OK. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so now, if you see that you are changing the slider, say it's influencing from the outcome, uh, change the hint of the X and Y. Right click and type hint, and then go for integer. And also for the X, it's the same. So, generally, this is uh, in this C sharp script which should be now visible, we can generally use exactly the same things which we were using in Visual Studio, meaning that we can create an array. Um, Uh, here is uh, integer the rectangular brackets, so is it uh, an array? Here should be a q1, new integer q. So we are creating an array with two elements inside. And then I'm saying that the first element should be equal to our input x, and the array, uh, the first element should be equal to y. Uh, since uh, we want to also see it, uh, I will just say that B capital letter A is equal to RA1. If you didn't see, this is how the code uh, was looking. Just check if you have everything like right new. Yeah. So if you have it, just click OK and go outside and see what has changed. So now the outcome, you see it's a list. Per definition, C sharp uh, debugger inside the Rhino Grasshopper can change the array to a list. Uh, normally we could, we should maybe do it by uh, saying a dot and uh, putting uh, to uh, list, but uh, it's since oh, sorry, it's so small that you don't see. Um, so normally we should rather do like array one, two, list or change it to list. But uh, here he can automatically do it, so uh, it's okay. Um, okay, we will leave this C sharp very complicated code. And we will go for the another one, which will be looping, uh, looping for the points in our grid of points. And he will try to catch, for example, these points, which are on the Z equal to zero. Uh, here we just need uh, one input. This input will be a list of points. 
So I will also change the input name. Oh my gosh, it's so small. Uh, I will just click here PTS and maybe IPTS. So it's IPTS. This is just the name. So it doesn't, uh, if you zoom in, you don't have a mouse. Yeah, uh, zoom in. Yeah, then here is a small <laughs> minus. And here you can uh, right click on the X and you will have change name. Then here, look here, this is important. We are switching from item access to the list access. And then right click on it and type hint. 0.3D this time. And when you are opening this thing, here should be list 0.3D IPTS. Uh, it's good. It's just about name, but if you want to change it, with us, a few mm -hmm. right click on the X, and the first position to it is just the name which is Yeah, okay. So uh, we have our list of points which we can operate on. And uh, let's try to operate on this list. So we can definitely create a for each loop. Let's, uh, but uh, since we want to get out um, okay, maybe uh, step by step. Let's do a single point 3D. PT1, I will call it. Call it. Let me see. Ah, this is good resolution. PT1. Uh, new. Ah, it's kind of uh, New point 3D, semicolon. And here I can already declare the coordinates of this point. If I will say a equal to PT1, it will give me this point zero zero zero. Uh, let's uh, okay. Uh, so any kind of the, uh, let me check on one thing. Uh, there is something like a Rhino common and uh, go for the Google right now, all of you. Rhino common API and put point 3D. Oh, sorry. Um, I am typing this thing, Rhino common API point 3D into Google. And the first thing which he should find after typing Rhino common should be the point 3 uh, structure in the developer Rhino 3D com. If I open it, I will see uh, the different kind of the constructors of the points and all of the properties of the points and the methods which I can uh, make on this point. So my knowledge about how to operate on the elements inside the Rhino Grasshopper is general, generally from, from the IPI from the Rhino common. Uh, so if you don't know how to operate on the specific uh, element, just type in the Google the Rhino common and then the type of the element which you want to operate on. And now I would like to create a list of doubles, list double, which will be the distance from point zero, zero, zero to the, uh, all of the points in the grid, in the, um, our input. List double, we will call it distances, maybe this, this, this like this, new list um, double. And uh, then uh, let's let's go for the for each loop. 
this time for each uh, loop bar and the IP in IPS. I think it's retable right now, like it is on the screen. Yes. Or <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, I will just move it later to the Visual Studio with the black. Uh, so for each for IP in IPT, so we are going through each of the uh, each of the point, and then we would like to add the new distance. Uh, add. And maybe to make it slower, we will create a double, which is a dist, which is a single distance. And then we will go for the PT1, distance two. If I click on dot, uh, I will have uh, some tips and I will choose the distance. And then if I open the brackets, he also, uh, he is trying to uh, give me a tip what should be here. And he's expecting a point 3D and uh, he will uh, measure the distance in between these two points. So since I want to uh, collect uh, the distance in between the base point PT1 with the, all of the points in the grid, which are all of the elements in the IPTS, then I can collect it. And the uh, outcome should be this. I will just move it to the Visual Studio to make it visible for you. Uh, just run it and see if the outcome is correctly a uh, list of uh, outcomes. Uh, of course, I have to connect uh, IPTDs to it. Check. Add this uh, because you are not adding anything. DSDS uh, dot add and here it's empty. Uh, okay. uh, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Yeah, click okay. We will make a break soon. So, yeah, now it's working. Um, somebody has a problem? Is this working? No. No, because you didn't add anything here. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Remember about putting here something. First, the numbers should be from 0 to 10, but then it starts to be some other numbers. Because he's measuring from 0 to 0. Okay. Thank you. 
very interesting to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody has this on your screen, should be fine now. Uh, so now uh, let's try to create another C-sharp script, which will be looking for a specific points. Mm, so I will go for the C-sharp script again. One more time, one input. I will call it one more time EPTS. It's very good to remember how to do it. And after this, we will go for a break. Um, so if I go here, the first check is here. When you are coming in your debugger, first check is if I have exactly the same here as I want it to be. So if it's a list of point 0.3D, then it's okay. Okay, then I will go out and I will add another input and I will call it Z level, Z level. And I want it to be a double. Yes. So here, double Z level. Okay, uh, level. and then let's uh, try to find, let's uh, create a list, but this time a list of point 3D. So as you can see, we can create a list of all of the existing types uh, in the C-sharp. We just have to type here, and I will call it PTS. And new list. Yes, 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 sorry for that. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's, no, it's... Okay. Uh, so we have new list point 3D. And now we have to create a loop over the EPTS to look if the Z coordinate of the PTS is equal to the double Z level. Uh, we will use this time, we could use for each loop, but we will do it uh, alternatively with the for loop to check, uh, to, to learn, um, to, to make as much as possible. So ENTI equal to zero e smaller than and then this is a question what is the dimension of the EPTS uh, list because uh, I cannot stiffly put here 100 although I know this is the number I uh, I can also check this number by putting IPTS and then dot and then count and count will give me 100 because it's uh, and I plus plus then if I will go for the IPTS I, this will be my temporary point 3D. So if I will put point 3D TPT, uh, I can say this is my temporary point IPTS on which I can operate. So 
this time I am not using new because I am only use, using new. The first uh, time I am declaring uh, the, uh, the, um, the variable. But since this point 3D is just uh, taking all of the data from existing point, I don't have to put new. Even if I will do it, if I put here new, he will say it's not possible. Um, so new, I am only using when I have first declaration of the element, either a list. Okay, we have a point 3D, then PPT. Then I'd like to... Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, the idea is to check what is the temp, uh, or I will check the double temp z equal to temp ppt and then dot and uh, sorry too much uh, temp ppt dot and then z. So exactly like I was uh, telling to you, if I go for the point three stru uh, structure in the uh, in the point uh, in the Rhino Common API, then I will find, for example, the Z uh, gets or sets the Z. Oh my gosh, it's so small for you. Uh, the Z coordinates on how it's to be. Um, okay. So anyway, you can uh, read all of the properties. So forget about that. Uh, you just put a dot, and then he is starting to help you with uh, choosing the correct thing. And I will just type capital Z, and this will be, uh, be my temporary Z. And now I have to create my if statement. If Z is a QL, and here I double uh, use the a QL sign to the uh, Z level. I suppose this is the name which I put here. Then PTS add simple. And the last thing which I'm doing is I am adding a equal to then PPT. Sorry for that, I, I'm just trying to put it already to the... So, uh, PPS is declared a new list of empty points, or there is no points, this is just an empty list. Uh, then I am going for the for loop here from here to here, and then I'm, uh, I am I want to achieve an indexing. So the index starting from zero, then I am checking the length of the EPTS so input points, and I want to change this index by one by every uh, loop. So point three D temp PPT I am declaring inside the loop, and I'm saying that this is equal to IPTS index i. Then I am checking the z position or the z coordinate of this point 10 PPT, and I am comparing it with the z level, uh, which is a double. And uh, then if it is the same, then I want to have uh, this uh, point to be added to my PPS. Mm, let's check how it is working in practice. So, for sure I have to add the Z level, I will choose from 0 to 10, and let's see what the, 83, uh, sorry, it should be PTS of course, uh, as an output, A equal to PTS. So I want to have a list of points as an output. And 
then I will just uh, um, yeah oh, of course as uh, at level I was thinking about like this but it should be the y uh, level because it's x and y because if it's uh, x zero then he's marking everything it's which is on the z coordinate zero which is generally everything here so uh, one change to the code, uh, we will go into Y. So here, double temp, I will change to Y, the name, and Y here, and Y here, and also Y here. Um, so everywhere, when you see the capital Z, just change it to capital Y. Uh, And then outside, we also have to change that lever to the Y level. Um, in my case, it is working. I will just... Um, this is how the code should be played. Just uh, maybe uh, you have uh, and also uh, one level here. Just uh, reconnect this thing there. Just uh, <laughs> If you will change the Y level on the uh, start to move it by the right. Um, no. Yeah, this will be.
Okay, let's make a break. Uh, how long it should be? Stay now, what do you think? You have 15 minutes. 15? Yes. yes, 15 minutes of break. So 11 uh, 10. Okay. <laughs> You can save it. Um, the name should be here. Uh, 
Nej, nej, nej. 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 Nej, nej, nej.